Okay, so let's get things started. Uh, if people jump in later on, then I guess they can uh, catch up. But um, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and check the masks. So as we, if you've seen the tutorial before, um, we did the masks. I'll throw a link at the top so you can go ahead and check that out. But it just went into the basics of how to create masks and what to do with them. I'm just going to show you a few more things that I didn't really go into. So I'm going to change this over to the movie clip editor. But before I do that, just make sure that you're in cycles render and that you're also set the resolution to the video clip that you're going to use. So also make sure that it's 100%. A lot of people leave this at 50 and wonder why the masks don't work. Uh, a lot of the time it's because your percentage slider is at 50%. So let's go over and change this to the movie clip editor. Go ahead and open up the movie clip that you want to use. So set the scene frames, then hit prefetch. If it doesn't prefetch all the way, you will need to go to file, user preferences, then system, increase the memory cache limit. So now we've got this um, prefetched, we can play through. As I mentioned before, we're going to add some colors to the lips. And then if we notice as we play through the footage, the hand actually goes in the way. So we'll need to rotoscope this hand out and then combine the masks in, in order for them to work. So again, it's very simple, um, but I just want to show you how you can manipulate the mask points to sort of work easier for you. So let's just jump back to the first frame. And when it, we will need to track something later on to move the lips. But first, I'm just going to go over to the masking mode. And then we can go ahead and create a new mask. And then hold control and then left click. We're going to create these points like this. So. And then to finish it, just hold alt and then C. We have the basic mask. Now we need to refine it. Press A twice. Then press V. And then automatic it does this so when it does this and it looks very crazy what we need to do is play with these points here for each point that we created it's now has it has this handle on the left and this handle on the right and if we drag these in it sort of pinches the curve if we pull it out it sort of extends the curve so it's just a, a point or it's just a matter of fact just trying to move these around and get used to them so let's move this down for this effect i'm going to I'm going to keep the mask inside the lips. I don't want to go outside the lips. We will be adding a blur, so we don't need to go right to the edge. But um, if we just manipulate these points. See, for example, this curve here, it's not working for, for what we need. So just drag the corner point in. Same thing for this one. And what we can do as well, when we select the middle, if we press R to rotate, we can move these around. That looks like it'll work. <laughs> so now we have this, we want to parent this to a tracker. So again, we need to go back to the tracking marker or the tracking tool. So you can either go here and go switch the mode or just press tab. Now to create a tracking marker, you would be best if we had a point that we could track. On her face, she does have a beauty spot, so we could use that. I'm not going to use that in case in your example or in the future you don't have that sort of spot to track. What we're going to be tracking is actually the corner of her mouth here. But um, you can track pretty much anything as long as, it's, as long as it's moving in the same motion as the sort of the lips. So I'm going to track here. For the tracking settings, motion you can keep the same. Match, we're going to change this to previous frame. And we're also going to enable normalize. Now these two settings I always enable since it helps track better. Now you might not always need these settings uh, if you don't just leave it as they are. <laughs> what I do like to do as well is uh, check search size. That will let me know how far the uh, blender is going to search for that pattern. So let's zoom in, hit con uh, hold control and left click. I'm going to press S to scale this up. And then I'm just going to scale down this search size, otherwise it will take too long to track. Now again, normally when you create tracking markers, you never want them to be this big unless you're only using one or two of them or, you know, just a small amount. But since we're only using one of them, we can go quite big with it. Anyway, so let's just track this forward. Uh, it does a pretty good job. You can play through and make sure this doesn't jump or slide out the way. That does a pretty good job, actually, so we can leave that. Let's jump back to the first frame and then go back to the masking tab. So I well, press tab to go back to the masking tools. Then we'll press B. We can uh, use the box select and I'm just going to select all of these. 
since we already have the track selected, if we hold control and then press P, it's now parented, so it'll move along. Looks okay. Now, that's not really rotoscoping, that's just creating a basic uh, mask and then just parenting it to a track and then making it move, which is all well and good. But when you have an object that moves and it changes shape like this, we really need to rotoscope and that generally takes frame by frame or maybe five at five frames at a time or 10 frames at a time depends on how fast the hand or the object is moving but for this it's going to be fairly simple um, if we jump to the last frame since that's where we need to um, create the mask and if i didn't really if i wasn't clear enough why we need to create this mask um, when we create the effect or add color to these lips right now it, um, it will add color to these fingers as well which we don't want so we're just essentially occluding um, the hand or occluding the effect. So again, let's jump to the last frame. Uh, what we can do as well, if we, when we press a new mask, this old one uh, just goes away. And it'd be nice to see where the mask uh, ends or where the mask is. So let's just jump back to the first mask, which is this one here. We already have it selected. So if we press Control C to copy, go back to the first mask, oh, sorry, the second mask, and we can name this. And then let's press Control V, <laughs> paste it. Now we have this here. I'm going to use this as a template. So let's just open this and then click twice. This is going to be the reference. And we're also going to be deleting this. So make sure you remember to delete it. I'm also going to press this icon here, which restricts the selectability, I guess, is the word. I don't know. Anyway, so now we have this we need to create the second mask or the second layer within this mask. So just control click. In fact, I'm going to give this a couple of points because I might need them later on. And then I'm just going to select all this, Alt C, close it. And there's our next mask. So for this one, um, what we're going to need to do is insert keyframes. So instead of inserting keyframes each time, what I'm going to do is uh, activate automatic keyframes. So if I just scroll my middle mouse wheel to reveal this section here, I'm just going to select this button. Now, every time we move the mask, um, it will set a key point or a keyframe. So let's uh, B to select, select all of these. And what I'm going to do is just drag it or press G. Just move it pretty close. Again, I'm going to add some blur so we don't need to go right to the edge. Once we have this, let's, um, well, we've already set a keyframe. If we press T, you can see it's added a keyframe. Now, if we press the left arrow on our keyboard, we're going to jump one frame. So now we have this. If we press G, we can sort of try and align it, but it doesn't really work. And then if we wanted to kind of rotate it, if we press R, it doesn't really work. And that's because you need to change the pivot point. So if we go down here, we have this section here, which is the pivot point. And let's change this to bounding box center. Now it's going to rotate around this center point here. So we press R to rotate. Now we have this, press G. And it makes things, it makes things a lot easier, especially when objects are the same shape and they're just moving in space or they're just rotating slightly. So just rotate it, move it along. Then we press left arrow, again, press G. And just keep going through and it's as simple as that just rotate if you need to press G and if you need to manipulate these points go ahead and do that but uh, yeah, just keep going backwards make sure you select all of them <laughs> press G press. so it took me a while to get used to or, or even to realize that this option was available the pivot point and I'm um, just manually moving these points just takes a long time so when you've got something where you can just rotate something pretty simple and pretty quickly, it's uh, it's a time saver. You get the idea now, I guess. Let me just check the comments, make sure you guys are seeing things okay. Uh, let's see, Captain Icy, yeah, I will upload this later on as a shorter version without me rambling, so you, you can watch that too. You, got, you guys don't even need to watch this. I will upload it later on. And also, if you guys don't really find this interesting, I'm not going to really upload um, or do live streams in the future. It's just, it's up to you guys. If you find it interesting, I'll do it. If not, you know, no means. Don't worry about it. Okay, so let's carry on. Rumbling too much now, I apologize. See, that's the thing. When it's an, an edited video, I cut all this rambling out so you don't have to, um, you, there's no pain of hearing me talking rubbish. 
and when you're trying to focus on rotoscoping and talking at the same time. So when you're moving these forward and backwards, if you notice I'm trying to get the same uh, thickness or the same width to the end, if that makes sense, because when we add the blur, um, we want to try and keep things even. We don't want it to look uh, a bit thin later on. So try and keep things fairly even. Let's move on to sort of combining them in the uh, the node editor. So let's say you're happy with this. Let's go ahead and move over to the node editor. So as always, we need to move this over to the scene tab and check use nodes. See mine already here, but you do need to check use nodes. Otherwise you won't see them. Also check backdrop. And then let's just move these other way. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can press Control, Shift, and left click. It will then add a viewer node. If not, just Shift A, go to Output, and add a viewer. Same thing uh, with this. I want to change this very quickly. So if I press Shift S instead of Shift A, I can just change this straight away to uh, a movie clip. Another thing we can do, since we already loaded up the movie clip, just select this icon here, load up the movie clip. And just scale this down a little bit looks pretty good okay so we're going to add some colors to the lips and you can do this in a few different ways um i'm going to just do it in a very basic way just so you can see the effect so we'll go to color go to mix drop this on here and change this to a color let's say blue and then depending on which blend mode you use you'll get a, ver a variety of different effects so let's I'm going to cycle through these, by the way. I did a quick video or a quick tip video showing you how to do that. But if you select the node, then hold Alt and then press down arrow, you'll just cycle through the blend types. But before we do that, I guess we should ask, uh, add the mask. <laughs> Shift A, go to input, then to mask. Select the lips and then just drop this into the factor. So now it looks like this. So again, if we start here and then just hold Alt, press down on arrow, you can sort of see the different effects. Now, I think Hue is a good one. Let's try Hue. That sort of matches the color pretty well. Obviously, we do need to blend it and blur it, but that sort of matches the color pretty well. Um, another good one, I think, is uh, Overlay. So it doesn't give you the same color, so you will need to play around to get the color that you want, but it's sort of... I think it works quite nice depending on <laughs> the occasion another good blend mode would be color let's try color it's not too bad again it depends what sort of effect you're trying to go for you're trying to put thick makeup on or nice sort of natural looking lips or i don't know it's up to you what sort of effect you're trying to go for so play around with the blend modes and find something that works for you um, the next thing we're going to do is sort of fix this error here so we just change this color so it stands out and then when the fingers sort of go over here, we can now just occlude this. So let's do that. And again, I think we talked about um, combining masks in the previous tutorial, so you may already know how to do this. It's very easy. We just duplicate this uh, lips mask and then just replace this with hands. So now this mask does this, this mask does this. So we want to combine it in a way so this is actually occluding this one, if that makes sense. I know I'm not really explaining it too well, but I, I think you guys understand. So let's shift A, go to converter, and then add in a math node. Just drop this in here, and then we preview what it does. Plug this in to the bottom. And if we change this to subtract, I think, that's not working. If not subtract, try multiply or divide. For some reason, this is not working the way I should do. I guess this is uh, the troll of live stream. We've got the lips, we've got the mask. I think this should be black. Oh, I know why, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> Let me go back. When um, I added the mask, you guys probably noticed that. Let me go back to Movie Clip Editor. I added this reference and I said, oh yeah, delete it. But I didn't, did I? <laughs> so we need to delete this reference, this one here. If you didn't do that, I apologize. I just wasted like three or four minutes of your time. <laughs> so now we go back to the node editor. If we change this, this should be subtract. So now we have this. So we our lips subtracting this equals this. 
which is what it should do. Now we have this strange pink thing, that's just you need to clamp, and then it's fixed. Change this color to something better, and I think the blend mode, I'm going to change this to hue. It's far too dark. And then let's blend these lips. So we throw, we're going to throw a blur. Now again, we've got two masks. The first one is for the lips and the other one is for the finger. So we don't want the same uh, values for the blurs on each of these. We want two separate blurs. So let's drop this in here. And then, in fact, I'm going to do this a quick way. Um, this is something somebody showed me. I can't really remember who it is now, but I will um, throw a comment later on. Um, somebody showed me how to do this very quickly. If you want the same number in both of these, instead of typing the number, then copying and pasting, what you can do, if you left click and drag down, you can select these and edit these both at the same time. I really can't remember who uh, told me this, but thanks to you for saving, my, saving me some time. So let's change this to 12, maybe some more because the lips need quite a bit. Might be too much. That looks okay. Uh, again, the lips are far too bright. I wouldn't have it that color, but I mean, you get the idea for this tutorial. I think with masks, there's quite a few things we could do. Uh, I know what we could do. Let's just mess around. Let's start a new project, movie clip editor. I'm gonna go ahead and load in the movie clip. Sorry, I'm not prepared. I didn't really think what we could do in this live stream. Maybe in future live streams, um, you can sort of give me ideas what you guys want to see. Uh, let's prefetch set of scene frames. Now it's not really full shot. Um, I'd really like it to be more zoomed out, but this could work. I, I want to sort of scoop out or hollow out the head, um, and let's see what we can do. So let's first set a tracking marker. I'm going to move through this uh, very, very fast, so if you guys sort of fall behind, uh, let me know. Again, same as before. For this, you know what, I'm going to track the eyebrow, or like the middle of the head here. When you don't have tracking markers, it's hard. It's a hard thing to do to add anything. So finding areas where which don't move or are easy to see by Blender to be tracked is uh, always a good thing and it's always a challenge. I like finding areas on the face or on, on objects which it's really hard to track. So let's see if this works. This is going to be interesting. That's just not tracking. Why is it not doing it? Let's try again. Uh, blender's crashing, I think. It's not a good sign. Ah, uh, it did. It died. Let me try and uh, do that again. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. <laughs> movie clip editor. Open up the movie clip. Uh, where was it? Tutorials. Which one did we use? This one. This one. Set scene frames, prefetch. Scroll out because that guy's creeping me out. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, let's try this. Why is it crashing? Don't crash again. This is typical for the first live stream. I have problems twice, maybe three times now. Or maybe because, oh, it's, it's trying. Maybe it's trying. I'm just impatient. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm impatient because it's too large. To see how the, um, the search size was a lot bigger than before. Yeah, it, this is why. Just too impatient. Okay, now let's tracked. Let's have a look in the uh, search search area. Let's see if it jumped around. I mean, it's not perfect, but it kind of works for this example. If I was doing this and I was recording this for a specific reason, I would um, 
put a dot on the actor's face or maybe two dots just to track it and then we can remove them later on so always add the dots if you know you're going to add some visual effects later on because they so really help out <laughs> anyway so let's jump back so this one here what i'm going to do let's see change this to masking mode i'm going to call this head one and let's create a mask like this okay again we need to parent this but before we do that oops that's crazy before we do that we need to select these press v press automatic and then just fix this crazy thing i kind of want to make it curl around Yeah, that'll work. Now we have these, box select. Since the tracker is selected, press Control P. That will follow. Then we're gonna need another mask. So let's call this um, inside. And again, we need to use that other mask as a, a sort of reference. So I'm gonna go back, use this. Since we have it selected already, press Control C jump over to the inside press ctrl v and again make sure well, in fact instead of using this as, a, as an actual reference we can use this as the mask but just change it to be what we need it to be if that make, makes sense um so what we can do if we just a to deselect them press b i want to delete these so we get something like this In fact, what I'm going to need to do is just change this completely. <laughs> this is messed up here, so I can delete this one. Just select it, press delete, and you can delete it. Oh, I kind of want to make it do this. So I'll need to change the first mask just to sort of match this mask. But um, See, like that. So what I'm going to do instead this time, I'm just going to select these, copy them, go back to this one, go back to this one, I'm going to delete this one, just paste this in, and then control left click, just add these points up here. That's kind of all I want. And again, we, I think we need to <laughs> parent these, so if we play this, no, it works. I thought we might have had to parent them we don't so that's good go back to the uh other mask my apologies this one here and we need to parent this now to the oh it already is because we copied it didn't realize that so job's done <laughs> so now we have this let's go over to the node editor and see what we can do so use nodes backdrop add in a viewer node change this shift s remember we did before and I'm doing it very quickly. So again, if anyone's falling behind, let me know. Anyway, so let's zoom out. Again, this guy's creeping me out. And what do we need to do? So Shift A, go to Color, Mix. And what I'm gonna do is if we, again, make sure this is plugged into the viewer first. If I select this color here, go down to the color picker, just select the color behind it. And this probably only will work if this sort of situation where there's nothing behind it and the, the sort of the wall is very clean and bare. If you've got a green screen, then this is all, all the better. Doesn't need to worry about it, but I don't know. This is sort of what we're getting. We mix them just using that color. Shift A, go to input, then mask. And we're going to use head one as the factor. So plug that in. We have this, which doesn't look too good. Shift A, uh, let's go to, we will be adding another mask to this just to get rid of these bits of hair here. But for right now, I'm gonna move on to the next part, which is adding the inside of the head. So to do that, just Shift D, duplicate this. I'm gonna drop it onto the composite node here. So then I can just press Control, Shift and left click, which is just an easier time-saving way, I guess. Now I'm going to plug in the movie clip image into the bottom here. And then we're going to use, if we go to input, in fact, what we could do is just copy this mask here. 
and then change it to inside. We get this, which doesn't look too good. <laughs> so in fact, instead of using this image, yeah, so what I need to do is add an image. So let's find an image. Um, textures, I'm sure I have something, maybe blood that could work. I'm gonna plug this into the image and we get this because if we look at the original image, it's really small compared to the scene. So that's why it's showing black and uh, well black. So if we shift A, add in a distort, a scale. I'm just gonna make this uh, render size just so we have this big image. And then if we shift A, go to, let's see, we can either add a transform or a translate. If we add a transform, we can change the scale as well. So I'm gonna add a transform node, just scale this up a bit and then move it. Maybe make it a lot bigger. Um, it's just somewhat crazy with a mask. You can do anything. I mean, I'd like to see what you guys, the ideas you come up with using masks and what you can do. I'm gonna tidy these parts up. Um, you can maybe add something inside it or maybe add something coming out of it. Or even what we probably could do if we use the original, we could probably animate the head or the top of the head coming off. Let's try that. Uh, what would we need? Which mask? Could try this one. I'm gonna plug this mask into the factor. Try that again. So we have this. This is what the, it would look like. Now, if we, what are we gonna move? We're gonna move. We're gonna move the mask and the uh, the head. So we're gonna shift A, distort, translate. I'm gonna drop this on the bottom string here, and then duplicate it. Shift D, and put this onto the mask factor string here. So shift A, go to input, add in a value just so we can connect these up. If we move this, we can sort of slice the head off <laughs> and animate the, this value, or we could actually do it for the up. Kind of crazy. And again, it would look better if the, the whole face or the whole head was sort of in shot, but I don't know, maybe you could do something with this. Um, again, you'd probably want, want to blur the edges, add an inside rim, make it look a lot more realistic. Um, obviously the color grading as well needs work. But off the top of the head, this is just, it looks pretty cool. Maybe we should do this in the future. Am I crazy? Is this a good thing to do? Should we do this in the future? I don't know, let me know. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, this is the first live stream. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm not sure what else we could do. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to let me know in the comments. I also give it a like. Uh, as always, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.